could be the end time apostasy that the world wants us to have. I'm not saying that. It really, it, 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 if it's not, it's definitely part of it. Because it's a rejection of the Word of God. Let me ask you a question. What's the most important scripture, verse, without which the whole Bible falls apart? Mm -mm. No, that's, that's good. Uh, I, I asked this to a Christian on television. He was interviewing me and he said, John 3.16 is my fruit. Think about it. The most important verse without which the whole Bible falls apart is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. That's why it's there. If, in the beginning, God did not create the heavens and the earth, who cares what he says? We better go find God. We got to go find the creator. You know, maybe we are evolved from slime balls in a mud pit somewhere, <laughs> of which all of us know people like that, but that's besides the point. <laughs> okay, so that's the most important. And from there, it builds up, so that once you know that this creator is created and he's provided everything, then he says, love the Lord your God. Then he goes, so there's this, this, this concept called informing theology. Abraham only knew what went before him. David knew the Torah and uh, Joshua and Judges, and he, he refers to that. Isaiah knew more. In the New Testament, they knew the whole Old Testament. But if you want to be a church like the church in the book of Acts, you've got to throw away the New Testament. They didn't have it. But that's our problem. We don't think the Old Testament is foundational for us. Yes, sir? How did Gentiles provoke the Jews to Huh. Love never fails. You love us. You love us regardless of whether we believe what you believe or not. You love us and you let us know why you love us. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law, she's the one who wrote this book, they provoked us to jealousy. They loved us. I was a, I was a dope smoking hippie, you know, but every time I got high, I, I wanted to be around the Grazianos. I wanted to be around them, you know, because there was so Something in their unconditional love for me that kept on pulling me and attracting me. And we would talk, we would trade books. You know, they gave me mere Christianity to read. I gave them autobiography of a yogi. And, <laughs> and we would talk back and forth. And, and, and they loved us and they prayed for us. So it's unconditional love. They didn't know any of the correct terms. Okay? They were talking about how you need Jesus Christ. And... But they loved us. My father, uh, he was provoked to jealousy at the end of his life because the Messianic congregation, Temple of Ram Kadesh, he used to start going there, and, and, and the people just treated him royally. But, I mean, you need to understand Jewish people nowadays. My father once said to me, he said, Chuck, don't you know Jesus is Catholic? <laughs> I said, Dad, how do you get that Jesus is Catholic? He says, it's simple. His mother Mary is Catholic. The whole world knows that. <laughs> right? I mean, if the Catholic Church started going, Hail Mary, a mother of grace, we might get somewhere. <laughs> so anyway, but that's it. And, and then if you, but, but you've got to also speak. Like, for example, if you have a Jewish neighbor or a Jewish friend, you can say to them, look, you are very special in God's sake. And as a born-again believer, I really love you, and I would love to express to you why. And they'll, and they'll say, I don't even believe in God, most of them. You say, well, it's okay. I still love you. You know, and I'm going to pray for you. So, well, that's fine. I'll tell you what, the first time they get into a crisis, they won't go to their rabbi, they'll go to you. Mm -hmm. My sister does this all the time. She's close now, but not, not yet in the kingdom. Chuck, pray for us. Why don't you pray, Lynn? Well, because you know God. <laughs> I have an ultra-Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox travel agent in Jerusalem. She goes to the wall every morning at 4 or 5 o'clock. One day, she's getting our tickets, and, and, and I'm talking to her about current events, and she leans over the table and she says, Chuck, what's going to happen? You know. She knows what I believe. I give her my newsletter to read all the time. So, just, it's, it's the love. It's friendship evangelism. <laughs> That's what will do it. Yeah. Okay? Any other quick questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I have so many friends who love the Lord who are looking to the building of the temple. And I get a little um, maybe confused because Jesus said he was the temple. 
about the building of the third temple. I, you know, I'm not sure uh, whether it needs to be built or not for the Lord to return. I tell you what I get concerned about. I get concerned about Christians who give the Lord's money into the building of the third temple. When God is in the process of building a living temple with living stones right now, and many of us in Israel can use your money just to live, just to survive, okay? In fact, that's part of my testimony. I used to live stone, now I'm a living stone. <laughs> but, but there is a living temple in Israel. There is a living temple in Israel with living stones, and these people could use the support. Some of them don't have enough money for food. Some of them need cars, transportation. Uh, there's an organization I know that raises money uh, that, that helps buy Messianic believers um, ovens and stoves, big items that they just can't do because it's... A, do you know we pay $8 a gas for a gallon of gas in Israel? $8! Do you know if I were to buy an apartment in Jerusalem, I'm renting an apartment, if I were to buy an apartment in Jerusalem, minimum it would cost me over a quarter million dollars, and in order to do that, I would need to come up with a third down. Thank God, that's why we didn't have the housing bubble. That's why we have it, because people have a huge investment. By the way, for those of you who love Israel, I'm going to recommend two books for you. Neither one of them are written by believers, but you can see the hand of God. One is called Six Days. It's by Michael Oren, the U.S. ambassador. He's also a historian, and it's about the Six Day War. And you will see how God drew us in and drew the enemy in so that we can gain back Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the Golan. Wonderful book. The other book is called Startup Nation. It's why Israel is such a success in the business field. And you'll see God's hand all over it. But it's amazing. One of the things that these guys found out, it's Saul Singer and somebody else, what they found out is Because our young men and women, instead of going into college, go into the army, they end up then going into business much more mature, having many more experiences of leading men and trying things. And in Israel, in America, you start a company and it fails, chances are you're not going to get any encouragement to start another company. In Israel, you start a company and it fails, they go, ah, try it again, <laughs> do it again. You know, we have a totally different concept. You know? Plus, this is my take. We've got Jewish mothers. The Jewish mothers are in this. You know, we heard about the Jewish mother who gave her son two sweaters for his birthday. He came in the next day wearing one, and she says, what's the matter? Didn't you like the other? <laughs> you know what the difference is between a Jewish mother and a Rottweiler? A Jewish mother, a Rottweiler, let's go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What do you got there? Oh, okay. Okay. Jesus had a Jewish mother. And I know that when Yeshua was young and he used to go out of the house, his mother, being a good Jewish mother, would say, Yeshua, take out the garbage. I know it. This is just what all Jewish mothers do. You know what? Ever since he's come in my life, that's what he's been doing. Amen. A good friend of mine, Jeremy Smith, <clears throat> who's, who's one of the directors of Intercessors for Israel, come, came from uh, uh, London to Jerusalem. And Jeremy and Lissa Smith have a big family, and he does counseling. He is a direct fulfillment of prophecy because it says, the Lord is building Jerusalem, gathering together the outcasts of Israel, healing broken hearts, binding up their wounds. Amen. This is their story. He's a wonderful brother. They've got a big family, and they deserve your prayers, possibly even your support. Okay, and the, how to be on the right side of God in the last days, uh, I don't know anything about this one, so I can't say anything about it. <laughs>